Hi and welcome back to another art journal video. Today I'm going to create a fun tag journal and I will be playing with a new to me product. These are the transfer me pages. They are by Dress My Craft. You use water to stick down whatever you like. You can uh, work with them as if they are collage papers. And uh, you can have a focal point that you can draw on yourself. You can have a focal point by using a stamp or a die. But sometimes you don't want to spend that much money on a stamp that you may use just once for a focal point. So these are really inexpensive. They have amazing designs. And you can get inspired just by having one of these pages. You will find pages with large big flowers, others with clusters that you can cut out and mix and match. There are cuter and smaller designs that you can even work with them for your card making. Here is an alphabet one, these are more vintage ones. And for each one of the styles that you see, there are tons and tons of different designs. So this is a more steampunky one, I would say, with clocks and gears and uh, things like that. Can't wait to use some of them in one of my art journals. There are others that you can use as borders. There are black and white and there are even others that uh, you can uh, use them to cover up completely a whole uh, background. I'm going to leave links down below to both Joggles and Scrapbook.com where they are available. But keep in mind that these are highly popular just because they are uh, about $4 each. So if you see some designs that are out of stock, check back again you will find that they do restock regularly. I find that these are very easy to use and really fun to play with, especially if you are a beginner, because you don't have to invest lots of money on stamps and dies to play with. So for today, I'm going to create my own uh, DIY tag journal. I'm going to use a product that I have from last year where you get these um, uh, tags. These are cheaper tags, actually, along with a couple of uh, tapes and other goodies in this pack. These are by art by Marlene. I am going to use some of them and put them together. If you don't have this kit, you can always create your own tags or just cut out your own pages. I'm going to stick them together with the tape that is included in the kit and this is quite thin. So when you stick them, you can't really tell once you apply the mediums on top where that uh, tape is. Just keep in mind that these tags are quite thick, so as you stick them together, make sure that you leave a little gap in between them so that you can open and close the book without problem at all. I used six tags for this journal, and here's another one that I shared last year where I just used three of them. Now that my tag journal is ready, let's have some fun with the transfer me pages. If you are concerned of making a mess on the other pages while working on one of them, you can always use a craft mat in between the pages. You can even use a, a scrap piece of paper. I'm not going to worry about that at all. And uh, after all, it's a tag journal, so it doesn't really matter if I have a couple of splotches here and there. For my first page, I decided to combine this wood background with the butterflies in this page. So I'm going to first cut out a part of uh, the wood background. I'm not going to use it all, so I can use it again on another page if I want to. Don't throw any leftover that you have. And I'm going to cut out a couple of corners, making sure that I don't have a straight line on the inside of the piece. Decide where you want to stick them down and then there is a plastic cover at the top that you need to peel off. Once you peel that off, it's going to uh, reveal the um, transfer and it is kind of sticky. They recommend to dip it in water now for a few seconds. However, I find that this way it is easier for me. So all I do is to stick it down wherever I need this to go and then I spray on top with water. I spray generously with water, enough amount, and as I spray, you will see that I can kind of see what is underneath. Once it's ready, you will see that it is easy to slide the top paper and reveal the beautiful design underneath. The tag that I'm working on is thick chipboard, which takes water nicely and it's not going to warp on me. If you don't have such tags, you can always use a watercolor paper. Just make sure that the paper that you are working on takes uh, water nicely and it's not going to end up super curly. Now I'm going to place the other corner at the top. Again, make sure that I stick that down nicely and I'm going to spray water on top. 
The process is so much fun and if you like collage you will have a lot of fun playing with those products. And sometimes we want to try something new instead of using our stamps or our dies. It's always nice to play with something completely different so that we don't get bored in our craft room. When I was a kid we used to have tattoos like that where you were sticking them in, on your hand and then you applied um, water on top. They work the same way but the designs are just adorable and you can find so much inspiration through all of these different designs. I want to cover up the cutting line from the scissors and that's why I'm using gesso and if you are concerned about the gloss I need to let you know that these are kind of shiny. No they aren't actually shiny they are they have that uh, satin finish which means that if you cover up completely the whole project with your matte medium that is going to give you a satin finish then you are good to go it's going to uh, disguise any shine now another thing that i did try was to cover up completely the whole project with uh, gesso clear gesso which is going to disguise that satin finish too. Now, if you apply matte medium or gesso, it is going to allow you to seal that and you can add even more uh, mediums on top. Before using them, it was a concern for me if they are too glossy. However, once I tried it, I fell in love with them. The satin finish is so subtle that it doesn't make a difference. I'm using my heat gun to dry this first layer of gesso and then I'm going to bring in some butterflies which are going to be the focal point of my page. Now you need to remember that uh, these are transparent which means that uh, whatever you have at the back is going to blend with the design that you stick on top. That's why I went with light colors for my background and I left a big area white. I'm using my scissors to go around the areas that I want to use. I'm going to separate those butterflies so that I have more flexibility on where I want to stick them down. And I'm not leaving too much of a white space around the butterfly. However, I do want to use some of the letters that are all around. It's easy to cut it with your scissors. Of course, don't remove the transparency from the top. Otherwise, you will have to fight with a sticky thing. You can also use your paper trimmer to cut out strips if you like. And I did even try to tear things and they do tear nicely, even without removing that um, transparency at the top. In this example and in the next page, I'm going to show you how you can use those directly on top of your project. However, if you don't want to risk it, you can always use it on a different paper and then cut it out. And I'm going to create two examples using that technique. So again, I have placed everything down and now I'm going to spray with lots of water. Again, after leaving that to soak in, you can kind of see the butterfly through that paper and then I can gently slide the top paper and reveal the two designs. I'm going to dry this out and let's do a couple of techniques to bring everything together. So here again I'm using the same paper, a uh, transfer me one, and I did cut out a bunch of uh, words. I'm going to use this text here and there, and I'm going to make sure that the text goes on top of my background as well as on top of some of the butterflies. This way I am bringing everything together so it doesn't look as if I have elements just stuck there on top of my page. Also, I don't uh, care if this is readable at all. Actually, I don't want that to be readable as I don't really care of what it says. I just want to use that as a visual texture. So I'm going to cut it in half and uh, stick it on two different areas. As you can see, I'm able to layer them up so I can apply one transfer on top of another. So here, for example, I only get the letters as the transfer and not a background. I can still see the background beneath it. If you notice here on the wooden background I did apply some clear gesso and on the butterflies nothing. So you see the clear gesso has no shine at all while the butterflies do have a little bit of satin finish. So it really depends on what you want to do and how you want the finished project to look like. I'm going to add some uh, stenciling here, just a very basic uh, stencil with lots of dots and my embossing paste. Making sure that I don't cover up any butterflies as I want them to be the focal point. 
And then to finish it off, I'm just going to stick a cheap coat that says love this life. This is quite uh, dimensional, but I don't really care since this is the um, cover of my book. So even a little bit of dimension is not a problem. I have plenty of uh, transfers from these two papers that I used. Of course, I'm storing them so that I can use them in another project. And here are some close-up photos on the first tag for today. Now let's move on on our tag book. If you want, you can work separately on each page or you can have a double spread. I'm going to do both as an example. So for this one, I'm going to work with these gorgeous big flowers and um, I'm going to do a double spread. I'm going to transfer it exactly the same way as I did with the first project. And then I'm going to show you a couple of quick and simple techniques on how you can bring everything together so it doesn't look as if it is just a sticker. Here I applied a generous amount of water, making sure that everything is nicely so soaked into water. And now, although I am trying to gently pull the paper from the top, I, just because it is so big, it is almost impossible to do that. So I'm just going to peel it off, which is something that do not recommend. However, I believe that just because I had too much water there, I had no problem at all. I'm going to dry that out, you can seal it if you want, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And then again, just like I did with the first project, I'm going to kind of erase that cutout line using my gesso. Then I'm using this stencil with a really basic design and I'm applying again white embossing paste. I make sure that I apply that design on both the white area that I used gesso on as well as on some of the transfer. This way I have some elements in both areas and it kind of brings everything together. If you want, you can add color on top of your transfer. And uh, here I'm using just a spray. This is watercolor spray. I repeat the same technique on both pages, making sure that I have some of that color in different areas, both on top of the transfer as well as on the white area down there. And then I'm going to repeat the same process, but instead of using the spray directly on the page, I'm just going to apply a little bit on my craft mat. This is vintage photo, by the way, and I will apply it with my brush. This way I have more control of where I decide to add that uh, brown color. And you can always move the color with water. That's the stress oxide, so it's not going to dry as vibrant as you see that at the moment. This is going to dry on top of the transfer, however, you do have some time to wipe off any color, if you like, from the transfer, just because it has that satin finish by using your baby wipe, so it works like an eraser here. However, if you apply clear gesso all over your background, then you will end up having a pore surface, which is going to soak any paint that you add on top. I'm adding some white splashes just because I love those details, and I can always go back with my gel pen and add some uh, highlights here and there on the focal points, the flowers, the leaves and the stems. I'm also going to ink up the edges, mainly at the top of the tags, with vintage photo, just because I want to have a darker border there. And finally, I'm going to add my quote. For that, I went with a sticker that says there is beauty in simplicity. And I did add a black strip of washi tape with white polka dots. And of course, I do have more flowers left over, which I'm going to store so I can use on another project. Here are some close-up photos on this double spread on my little tag journal. In the next two pages, I'm not going to do a double spread. I'm going to work on them separately, just as an example. So I'm going to use some blue tape there to protect the other page. And I'm going to go ahead and do a background. This time I'm working with acrylic paints and I went with yellows, oranges and reds. Use any acrylic paints that you have, anything goes on those tags. I went with my acrylic paints by Arteza, I have a box of 60 and I absolutely love the variety of them and you have probably seen me using those over the years. I'm going to apply the color directly on my page and mix everything there. 
I'm starting with yellows and oranges and it looks quite light at the moment, quite bright. However, I'm going to darken it up by using this darker shade of uh, red. I wanted to create a darker page as an example because I said in the first page that I made that you have to work on a lighter background. However, in this example and in the next page, I'm going to show you that this is not something that you have to do every time. If you want, you can go darker and instead of just using the um, transfer me page directly on top of your background, you can do it on top of another paper, which is white, and then just cut it out and stick it on top like we would normally do with our stamps and dies. Back to the background and I'm applying my acrylic colors, this time over a stencil with a lovely design. You will see that this is going to end up quite dark and this is what I was going for. And the stencil that I'm using is by Art by Marlene from a previous collection. And as my focal point, I'm going to use this gorgeous lady from this uh, transfer me page. And if you take a look at her, you will find out that she has Africa on her hair. I think this is such a stunning uh, design. I'm also going to cut out all the doodles that uh, I can use for my background. And once I have everything ready, I can uh, stick her on top of a white watercolor paper so that I can make a focal point separately. All the pages that I ever make have a meaning for me and this Africa page is very special for me. Many people don't know that but I was born in Africa. My parents are Greek but they used to live there for years. I was born in Cameroon but I came back when I was a baby and I was raised in Greece. My parents loved African artists and I was raised in a house full of African art around the walls so I can still remember those gorgeous ladies with the lovely silhouettes and the super colorful uh, dresses and that's exactly what this transfer reminded me of and of course it's in my bucket list to finally sometime visit Africa and the place where I was born now I'm making this a bigger focal point, so I'm drawing a body for hair. Of course this is a silhouette, so I just want to have a rough idea of a body. I'm not going to draw hands, etc. And I'm absolutely in love with that African hair. I'm using my scissors to cut around her, and I'm not going to leave any white border. I'm cutting exactly where that design is. I don't want to see the white edge coming through from the watercolor paper, so I'm going all around it with a black marker. I'm also going to add some shadow on one side of her dress so that it doesn't look that flat. It's going to give kind of a round effect. And I want to give a shine behind her beautiful face, so that's why I'm going to add a dot of yellow on top of acrylic paint on top of my finger I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow at the back of course you can do that with your brush I just love to get my hands dirty sometimes also I'm going to use my brayer with just a touch of um, white paint this is so little I'm even going to brush it off on another paper and then I'm going at the back to add just a touch here and there I think now I'm super happy with how the background looks so I can stick my lady on top. I'm really really happy with how this turned out and I wish I had this uh, transfer paper into a bigger one. I would definitely make a big uh, project for my wall. I'm using a thin black marker and I'm going all around the design to add some black lines which is going to give a definition between the focal point and the background. I do have those cutouts, uh, the doodle ones, which I'm going to stick down on the background. These are going to add some extra um, visual texture back there. And you can see this paste is a mix of different techniques where I'm using the transfer me designs directly on top of my background, while for the lady, I did that separately. Just like always, I did use my white gel pen to add some highlights on the doodles as well as on the lady. And I did went with a sticker for uh, my quote that says fearless, independent and original. And you can see here some close-up photos.
And since I was on an ethnic mood, I decided to make the next page using those elephants. I will use the blue elephant as well as the pattern, which is absolutely beautiful from the side. And again, for the background, I'm going with my acrylic paint directly on top of my tag using three shades of blue, darker, mid and lighter. And I'm following the exact same background technique like I did in the previous page where I'm mixing the colors directly on top of my tag. I'm going to leave that aside to dry and I will work on the focal points where again I'm using a separate piece of paper so that I can apply the transfer me of the elephant and the pattern and then cut them out. And by now you probably know how this works. I did that already in three pages. So again, I'm going to apply a generous amount of water, let it soak and then slide the top paper out. I'm going to use my scissors to cut out all the elements from here. And while I was cutting out the elephant, I did leave a very thin white border all around. It made cutting out the elephant easier and it's not that um, visible. I used the pattern at the bottom so that I have kind of a ground for my elephant. Then I stuck the elephant on top and in between I did add a strip of gold cardstock just to add a touch of shine. Now this is a stencil that I used at the background using uh, the exact same um, method like I did in the previous page where I used darker acrylic paint over it. And now I'm just going to place it on top and use my white gel pen to add some uh, highlights this way. I just wanted to introduce some white accents at the background without adding splashes, because the plan here is to add golden splashes all over the background. For that I'm using my brush as well as some watercolor metallic paint. And by the way, I did cover the elephant so that I avoid having splashes by using that um, transparency that I peeled off before sticking him down. And when it comes to elephants, when I was a little girl, everyone who was asking me which is my favorite animal, I would always say elephant. I don't know why it was never a cat or a dog. I still have a little necklace that I was wearing all the time with a little elephant as a charm. And I thought it was my lucky one. So that was the project for today. I hope that you had fun as I played with the new to me product, which is Transfer Me. You will find links down below to everything I used. Thank you all so much for watching today and I'll see you all next time.